What is going on guys? Today we are going to be going over how to get live stock data into Google Sheets. All of this data that we are currently looking at is completely interactive and will update automatically. So you can see all the different metrics that we're currently pulling here and we even have a stock screener. And remember this is all interactive. So let's say instead of Walmart we want to look at Kroger's financials we will type in Kroger's stock ticker here and you can see all of this will update automatically the same goes for our stock screener if we put in Kroger's ticker right here and I hit enter you can see all of this data is automatically pulled pulling live data into Google Sheets has allowed me to make many of my portfolio tracking spreadsheets like the ones you see here so with that being said let's go ahead and jump into the tutorial Okay, so there are multiple ways to pull stock data into Google Sheets, but by far the easiest way is to use the Google Finance function. The Google Finance function is a function that's built in specifically to Google Sheets in order to pull stock data. So let's go over how to use that right now. So if we come up here to this cell right here, you can see we have Apple's ticker listed right here, and we want to pull the live price of Apple. So what we're going to do is we're going to put in an equal sign and we're going to type out Google Finance. You can see it should give you the option to click on it right here and it's going to open up a parentheses. So once we have Google Finance and the open parentheses, what we're going to do is we're going to click on Apple's stock ticker right here. So Google Finance knows to look at Apple. And once I've done that, I'm going to close this parentheses and hit enter. And once I've hit enter, you can see we now have Apple's current price listed and this will update automatically periodically. So now we want Google Sheets to pull things like the days open, the days change, the days change as a percentage, earnings per share, price to earnings, one year trend line, and the market cap. So let's go over how to do that. So for the days open, it's going to be very similar. We're going to start out with equals Google Finance once again. And we're going to come over here and click on Apple. But this time we are going to do a comma and in quotations, we are going to indicate that we want the prices open. So we're going to type out price and then type out open. Get that in quotations and close off the parentheses and hit enter. And we can now see the price that Apple opened at. So let's go ahead and do days change as a dollar amount. And again, we're going to use the Google Finance function and we're going to come over here and click on Apple. We'll add a comma and in quotations, all we're going to do is type out change and close this off with the parentheses. And when I hit enter, we can see as a dollar amount exactly how much Apple has changed on the day. And now we want to see how much Apple's price has changed as a percentage. So this is going to be a somewhat similar formula. Again, we're going to use the Google Finance function and we're going to come over here and click on Apple. We'll add a comma and in quotations, we're going to type out change, but we want it to be a percentage. So we're going to type out PCT and that's going to help set it to a percentage. So let's close this off. But before we're finished, we need to divide this by 100 so that it will show up as a percent. And when I hit enter, we can now see exactly how much Apple's price has changed today. Now we want to see Apple's earnings per share. So again, we'll go to our Google Finance function. We will click on Apple, add a comma and in quotations. All we need to do is type out EPS for earnings per share. We'll close this off and hit enter. And now we have earnings per share data on Apple. Let's go ahead and look at our price to earnings. We will use our Google Finance function. We'll click on Apple, add a comma and in quotations. We're just going to type out PE and we'll close this off. And now we can see Apple's price to earnings. And let's go ahead and make our one year trend line. So the one year trend line formula is a little bit more difficult, but I'll have it posted in the description if you want to take a closer look. So to make this one year trend line, we're going to do equals and we're going to use the Google Finance function again. But before we do that, we actually need to type out Sparkline. And once we do that, we're going to do an open parentheses and type in Google Finance. And now we need to indicate to Google Finance that we want to make a spark line with Apple's price. So we're going to come over here and we're going to click on Apple. We're going to add a comma and in quotations, we're going to type out price. And once we've done that, we'll add a comma and we want to indicate to it that we want it to be a one year trend line. So what we're going to do is we're going to type out today 
and half parentheses here, and then we're gonna subtract 364. So that's gonna go back one year ago. And we're gonna add a comma, and we want it the trend line to be from one year ago all the way to today. So we're gonna type out today again, and we'll put these parentheses here, and then we will close off this formula, and I'll hit enter. And you can see we now have Apple's one year trend line. And the last thing we wanna see is Apple's market cap. So again, we'll use equals Google Finance, We'll come over here and click on Apple and we'll add a comma and in quotations we're going to type out market cap and we will close this off and hit enter and you can see we now have all of this live data on Apple and this will all update automatically and the great thing about these formulas we just put in is it's all interactive so if I highlight this entire row and drag this down you can see all of this stock data for all these other companies have all been automatically pulled. And again, so let's say instead of Apple, let's say we wanna see Kroger, we can change the stock ticker and hit enter, and all of this data will update automatically once again. So now let's come over here and build out our stock screener. Some of this will be repetitive, but some of it will also be new. So for our symbol, we just wanna list the symbol of a stock we might be interested in. So let's just say Tesla, and for the current price, we'll use our Google Finance function and click on Tesla and hit enter. For our volume, we're gonna do equals Google Finance. We'll click on Tesla once again, comma, and in quotations, we'll type out volume, close this off and hit enter. And we can see the volume for Tesla traded. We want now want our day's dollar change. So we'll do equals Google Finance, we'll click on Tesla comma quotations and we'll type out change and we'll close this off and we can see Tesla is down $20 on the day. Now we want to see it as a percentage so we'll type out Google Finance, click on Tesla, comma, in quotations we're going to type out change PCT which stands for percent and then we need to divide it by 100. And it says not available. Let's take a look at my formula. Let's see if I messed it up. Looks like I clicked on the wrong thing. So let's click on Tesla here and I'll hit enter. And okay, there we go. So let's set this to a percentage. So we can see Tesla is down almost 2% on the day. Now we wanna see our 52 week high. So for this we'll do equals Google Finance. Once again, we'll click on Tesla, comma, and in quotations. We're gonna type out high 52 and we'll close this off and we can see Tesla's 52 week high and now I want to see the low so do equals Google Finance we'll click on Tesla and type out low 52 and we'll hit enter and now we can see it's 52 week low and the last thing we want to see is yesterday's closing price so let's do equals Google Finance we'll click on Tesla comma and in quotation we're going to type out close and Y-E-S-T, which stands for yesterday, and we'll close this off and hit enter. And now we can see yesterday's closing price. So now we have all of our data listed in our stock screener. We just want to make our trend line. So for our trend line, we could use the exact same formula that we used over here for these trend lines, but I want to make this a more advanced trend line. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do equals, and I'm going to do the spark line formula once again but I'm gonna add an index to this and I can show you what that does later. And then I'm gonna add the Google Finance function to this. And now we need to click on Tesla's stock ticker. So we'll come right here, click on this, and we want it to be a spark line with Tesla's price. So we're gonna type out price here and we'll add a comma. And now we need to add the range and we want it to be a one year trend line. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna type out today and open this parentheses and subtract 364 and we'll add a comma and add today open parentheses once again and I will now close this off and with the index we're going to add two commas and the number two and close that parentheses off as well so now we're ready to start indicating how I want the chart to look so I'm going to add this symbol here and in quotations I'm going to type out chart type and I'm going to add a comma and we want this to be a column chart so I'm going to add quotations and type out column 
And I will close that off with quotations once again. And I'm gonna add a semicolon here because I wanna add something else to it. I want to adjust the color. So I'm gonna type out color and add a quotation. And I want this to show up as purple. And now we are ready to close this off. And so when I hit enter, you can see we now have a really great looking one year trend line. The great thing about this is if we wanted this to be a one month trend line, all we would have to do is go up here to this formula. And instead of going back 364 days, we would just type out 30. So when I hit enter, you can see we now have a one month trend line. So I'm just gonna go ahead and set this back now. So that is how you pull live stock market data into Google Sheets. I also have tutorials on my channel on how to pull things like live crypto prices, a stock's dividends, and a stock's industry into Google Sheets. Using these methods, I've been able to create many different useful investment trackers in Google Sheets, like the ones you see here. If you'd like to be able to download any of these spreadsheets, then you can head over to my Patreon page at the link in the description. So with that being said, thank you guys so much for watching the video, and please don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel.